Go. Yes. <laughs> Hello. How hey. you doing? Cheers. <laughs> great, great time you're joining us this evening. Thanks, guys. It's it's night there. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, ten o'clock here. Oh wow, man! It's like two o'clock here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. How you doing? Yeah, all good, thank you. Not too bad. Whereabouts are you based? <laughs> <laughs> That's Keenan, right, Keenan? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> who's who's Keenan? This one here, top left, <laughs> green jacket. <laughs> so what's happening, my man? I'm not too bad, thank you. Yourself? I didn't hear you. What'd you say? So I'm not too bad, and you? How are you? You're breaking up. Oh, uh, all right. Well, let me try and get that uh, fixed. Yeah. Give all me right. a second. Just so how are you doing? I'm good, man. It's what um. Up, what you been up to today? Have you been up to anything interesting at all? Yeah, it's it's the Christmas, you know, the Christmas spirit. So everybody um is just running around, you know, yeah. doing stuff and. <laughs> See, I got my candle. See, I got my candle lit. I'm in my office. Yeah, got my boxing gloves. For nice. My um, my uh, jujitsu. <laughs> I'm yeah. just chilling, man. I'm chilling. nice. We're putting up all the Christmas decorations tomorrow, I believe. So, fully okay. ready to get into the spirit this year. <laughs> fully ready. Okay. Cool. <laughs> what? Well, cool. I mean, what we've been doing is we've been going through all of our favorite Christmas films and. Die Hard, as much as some people might say otherwise, it is one of our favourite Christmas films. So yeah. few people better to speak to than uh, yourself as being part of the film. Yes. We, um, by, the, by the way, a lot of people, they say, what is Die Hard? Is it a Christmas classic? <laughs> or is it like a Christmas holiday story? I go, look, <laughs> it's a Christmas Cult classic. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. <laughs> uh, to, to go like all the way back, how did you start acting? Because so I assume it's quite a leap to go from where you started to then being in Die Hard. Oh, wow, man. I, I started, um, if you guys really do your homework, if you Google, <laughs> I started when I was like 10 years old. And, um, you know, it was this lady, I was riding my bike with my friends and this lady like saw me and she goes, I was going into a comic book store is what it was. Yeah. And um, just, you know, they just made those not too long ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I going into this lady goes, excuse me, um, I like your smile. Do you want to be a movie star? No way. You know, I'm like 10 years old, bro. I'm like, what? <laughs> so she gave me her card. And she said, give this card to your parents. If you want to be a movie star, you have a great smile and a good attitude. I watched you. I was like, yeah, okay. You want to be my girlfriend? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, and so I go home and... Um, to be quite frank with you, my, my mom had passed away a year before. So my oh. grandparents had adopted me and and the card, um, I, I left it in, in the back of my jeans or something and my grandmother found it. And um, she said, what is this? I said, some lady grandma asked me if I wanted to be a movie star. She goes, really? I said, yeah, yeah. So she calls up the lady, she gets the interview I go in, you guys, and this is hilarious. I go, you asked me how I started, right? Yeah. Yeah. I go into the agency, right? I was always good at reading, like comprehension and, and stuff like that. Like, yeah. um, I'll show you something. And so I went in and, and I, I met the lady. She was on this like throne, right? With this like medieval like thing. And then she had her little peons in the office next to her. Yeah. They're like this. <laughs> and then she goes, hey, kid, these are sides. Have you seen these before? And I said, she says, well, you're going to read this, and that's you. And then she had this New York actress, this really 
Boston, like New York. <laughs> and then he's going to read this one over here. You got it? I said, yes, ma'am. So, like I said, I was good at reading. Uh, acting, I didn't know anything about acting. So it's like, um, she gave me the size and she goes, action. And I go, I'm just giving you an example. Um, P.O. Box 158283, Washington, D.C., 19850. And she goes, go. Oh. And the guy said his line. And, and I go, switch to paperless at Bank of America, and it will be a better choice for you. And How did she, she goes, take off? <laughs> they look at me and she goes, when I got through all of it, um, she goes, okay, kid, have a nice day. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm walking out, bro. And and then I looked back at her because this is how my grandparents raised me. This is why I, I tell kids today. I, I look back at her and I go, ma'am, I would just like to thank you very much for this opportunity. And I am so grateful. And it was an absolute pleasure to meet you. And I was only like this tall, dude. I was like 10 years old. I was always shorter. And I looked at her, I took her hand, I kissed her hand and I never took my eyes off of hers. And I said, thank you so much. It was a pleasure um, meeting you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your time. And she said, wait. She goes, go get his grandmother. So my grandmother that came in and whatever, and she goes, look, your kid can't act worth beans. <laughs> However, we're gonna do this. We're gonna send him on three interviews. He's got to get one of those interviews or we drop him from the agency. You understand what I'm saying to you? And she goes, yes, he's my grandson. His mom passed away and I'm raising him the best that I can. She goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so he's gotta get one of those interviews and that's it. And then she goes, oh, sorry for your loss, by the way, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, I went and I got all three of those interviews. No it way. was the Jeffersons, it was the Blues Brothers, and it was a Mountain Dew uh, soda commercial. Yep. Then just I just kept going. Just kept going. So was that all like natural talent then, would you say? Because you hadn't had any acting lessons up to that point. That just, Amazing. just yeah, I think it had a lot. I think <laughs> thanks, man. I think it had a lot to do with this. Um, I don't say this a lot, you guys. I think it's because my mom had passed away and I was still mourning. And mm. for a 10 year old child, that's detrimental. And yeah. I think I was just like, I'm gonna smile and I'm hurting inside. I'm gonna smile though and make you guys think I'm happy. And if I can make you think I'm happy, then I'll look like you're happy too. It was kind of like that for a while. Yeah. You know, it was, it was like that for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, to, to fast forward from there then, how do you go from being that, that, that young, kid doing those interviews to being in Die Hard, which obviously goes on to be the success that it is. Let's see. Um, okay, you guys are aware of Lee Daniels, the producer, director, Lee Daniels? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Lee, Lee's a very, he's like an uncle to me. I call him Big Papa. Lee was, <laughs> ma he, was he was managing me at the time. And so um, I had did a, a movie called Places in the Heart was Sally Fields and Danny Glover. It won two Academy Awards the year before. And so Lee was talking to Jackie Birch, which is and was a huge casting director here. And they're yeah. just shooting the shit. And, and uh, she goes, well, Lee, you know, I'm looking for this, this guy in a limo, you know, Bruce is leaving his show Moonlighting and they wanna catapult his career into a movie career. I'm looking for this kid, a guy that drives a limo that's kind of just like carefree and offbeat. And so I'm gonna start casting that tomorrow. And Lee goes, oh, I got him. She goes, what do you mean you got him? She goes, I got him. She goes, uh, DeVoye White. She goes, you see him in places in the heart and look at his resume and stuff. And she goes, okay, okay, well, so they didn't, I didn't go through casting. They sent me straight to Bruce and to Joel Silver. Amazing. And I sat with them and I got booked by the time, five o'clock, by the time I got home, they called and I was booked. So. <laughs> did, did, 
at the time, <laughs> when, at that exact moment, did you kind of see, did you think this film was going to be as big as obviously it's become? No? No. What, what did you think you were going into? <laughs> another movie, another job. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. Bruce Willis, he's on that show, Moonlighting, okay. And it's 20th Century Fox, you know, okay, cool, 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 cool. We had no idea Amazing. that it was, it, it was to catapult his career, mm. you know, Bruce, which it did, of course. Um, we just had no idea that, and it just went pow. Yeah. And, it, you know, I was like, this movie is the shit right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it still is. It still is. Yeah, yeah so a long, yeah, time, a long time later, it I'm still is. Yeah, it's I'm like so everyone's, honored. everyone's go to. It's just everyone's. I'm so honored, bro. I'm so honored by it. Yeah, it's like you, you can ask any person, any age, and Die Hard is always in their like top 10 at least. And it's yeah. Like everyone can talk about it. I talked to a guy yesterday. Um, he was helping me with my car insurance because um, I got another car and we were just talking and, and um, he, somehow my manager hooked up the insurance, whatever, we just started talking and um, he was being transparent and I'm very transparent about myself even though I'm a very private person, mm -hmm. I'm pretty transparent. You know, when I'm honored to do something like this, you know, when I talk to people, I love talking to people. And he was 25, man. And he was like, he goes, that's me and my dad's favorite movie. We watch it every year, man, every year. And I was like, cool, bro. <laughs> we were laughing for a minute. Yeah, we had no idea that it was gonna, um, it was gonna do that. Huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. And spawn all those sequels and keep keep running for thirty odd years and I don't think there's any way you can you you walk in looking at that. I mean, how different it could have been if they would have taken Frank Sinatra in the in the lead role. Eh? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, you know, it, it it worked out good. It worked out really good. Uh, you know, Hollywood is a trip because. It not catapulted his career. It did so much for so many, all of us. And, you know, I'm like, excuse me, I'm like, I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. However, when that movie hit like that, management's calling me and they're saying, shows are bidding on you to join the shows. At that time, TV was, you know, it was like movies was, yeah. TV was like, you know, if it's the right fit. Mm -hmm. I had shows which I was not used to, Jack. Um, mm -hmm. I was not used to that. They were bidding, bro. They were like, one show was like, we'll give them this, then another show was giving this, and another show. So they're bidding. And then um, finally, I said, they were bidding, they went back and forth, and they were like, okay, I really don't ever really talk about money. However, However, it's I'm transparent. So they were like, okay, we'll give him fifteen thousand five a week. He can have uh, creative control over who the character's name is, what he's about, and and the uh, wardrobe. Creative control over the wardrobe. I was like, shit, I'm in. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and that was um, head of the class with Mike Tyson's wife, with Robin yeah. Gibbons. Yeah. And. Um, I didn't know anything about sitcoms or, I mean, I did them as a kid. I was on the Jeffersons, I guest starred. I wasn't, you know, used to that. And so, like I said, it catapulted, it, it opened up so many avenues and stuff. Mm. It was, it was good. Still is. I mean, this, this was coming out at a time with action films where it was kind of the opposite to this in that you had guys who just walk through bullets like Predator, I think was a year before or so. And then, so when you saw the script for this and you've got kind of the wisecracks right from the start, even with you and you and Bruce in the car right through to when he's got guns firing at him, did it feel different for the time? Or as you said, just kind of another job to go on? No, well, first of all, <laughs> let me tell you something. Remember when I told you guys I grew up and I would smile and everybody just like, yeah. 
Dude, I'm gonna give you guys. I'm gonna give you the dirt right now. You want it? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, we give it to you. So, um, we were filming, and it was time to rehearse. And so, I was like, "Okay, cool." I usually just learn my lines, read the script, and go. All of these years, you know, I'm like my grandmother. You know, showed me. I just learn lines and deliver and deliver. So I read the script, you know, and and stuff and I went in and when I read for Bruce and Joel it was cool and it was time to rehearsal the first day and um you know uh what was it John McTiernan I believe was directing yeah. us yes and uh John was like okay let, let's rehearse it so I'm gonna show you what you guys saw and what I did we mm -hmm. rehearsed it he goes, okay, so Bruce is right here and he goes, action. I go, okay, so you're a New York cop and you brought one bag, so why bother to pack, right? Yeah. There's like a pause and John like looks at me and goes, come here for a minute. So he pulls me aside, he goes, do you understand the chemistry of you and Bruce, you know, what's going on with you? And I was like, did you thoroughly read the script? Do you understand the objective of what you're supposed to go for with Bruce? <laughs> he goes, look. It was loud, you guys. It was embarrassing, kind of. He goes, look, I don't know if I can use this language, can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You wish. He goes, look, he's a fucking New York cop. He broke up with his <laughs> wife. He's flying into LA. He has one bag with him on the hopes of getting back together with his wife because he loves her. Do you fucking understand that? <laughs> And I went, <laughs> well, I went. He goes, okay, let's do it. <laughs> In action. Oh, so you're a New York cop. You brought one bag over here on the hopes of getting back together with your wife. So why bother the pack, right? That's what you guys saw. And that's when I learned how to act. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> Because that, that's one of the like best. Back at school. <laughs> yeah. That, that was one of the best things about the kind of chemistry between you and Bruce. It was just that's what made that little pair in there, and like the kind of the quip. So that's where it all kind of started then from there, from that point. Amazing. Yeah, we made out we John was like, after that, he 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 came over to me, he goes, That's my boy. And I said, Okay. <laughs> from that minute, from that minute forward, you guys. I mean, all the work you see, if you Google my name, it's good. It was energy. That's what it took. You know, the smiling and the energy. Then it gets to a point in your career, you need to learn how to fucking, you know, you need to get out. You know, you need yeah. to, to do your homework and do your shit. And from that point on, I learned um, body technique, objectives, the chemistry of the actors, the sensory techniques all of it you know i i got like the best coach you could probably get she's still around dude she's still around catlin adams magician robert de niro calls her like two in the morning <laughs> you know to do lines and stuff like that yeah. so you you know i learned how to act bro that's i said god gave me a talent you know dude come on yeah. you know come on dude and i just started doing that and learning what it's what it's really all about the craft of it and everything mm. so oh by the way bruce and i we pretty much made up john was like i want you guys to ad lib and i just started seeing all kinds of stuff i was like aha your wife beats you up and kicks you out the apartment <laughs> little boy little baby <laughs> we were doing all kinds <laughs> of stuff. there was stuff that you guys didn't see like we were driving yeah. also Dude, did you fart? <laughs> <laughs>
It was great. It was great. Was, what was he like when uh, you were kind of getting that, that shouting from the director? Was, was he on board straight away or did he kind of need to be told as well? No, dude, he had his shit down. I mean, he was like, <laughs> I guess I, I, I can only speak for myself. Um, one thing that I've learned in my life in that business is at this stage of the game in my life, I don't speak unkind, unimportant, or unnecessary about anyone. I just <clears> don't. <throat> and there's no reason to with him because he just had his shit together. He yeah. had it together. <laughs> I mean, he he probably heard the director. However, he's just like, you know, he's learning his own stuff. He's got a movie that he needs to catapult for his career. So he's doing his thing. What it comes down to is that you know, we, we had a blast. We had a blast yeah. doing it. And we got to make up stuff. And, you know, it was, it was just fun. It was funny. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. Did, did you shoot all your scenes at once? Or did you do it and then go away and then come back and do your other parts? No, dude. They booked me for three months. That was the deal. I did not work. Every day, of course, for those three months yeah. at 20th Century Fox, I was booked to do that. And then I would work like one day, you know, on this week, and then I'd work three days on that week. And then one night I was like at a club dancing with my friends, right? And I'm like, Ooh, they called me, they were beepers back then, pagers. <laughs> and I had a pager that they gave me, and it went off, and I went, Oh, it's them. Oh, shit. I said, I'm not having a good time. And I went and I called me and the assistant director was like, yeah, can you get here in like 45 minutes? And you could hear the music in the background, like bumping and stuff, <laughs> and like this house music. And, uh, and so, and then uh, he goes, can you be in 45 minutes? I said, mm hmm <laughs> And you, when they call, you go, you know? And, and I went and did my thing. And that's what we do, bro. So I thought like the, the main characters, obviously you've got yourself, Bruce, um, Alan Rickman and Al Powell. And I thought the way the scenes are set up, you could feasibly have not even met half of these people while filming because they're inside, you're on the phone and then at the start, or was it kind of, did you get to meet everyone, get on with everyone as you went through? Well, it was funny because um, I pretty much saw everybody because I would like be like, they would call me in and you know, actors, sometimes you, they call you in and you're waiting for hours. So I'm in my dressing room and I'm like kicking it and the Nakatomi Towers, those were brand new buildings in yeah. Century yeah. City near Beverly Hills. And Joel Silver gets what, he's get, what he says he wants, he gets. Yeah. And yeah. he, they went up there and those people built those buildings and they were all nice and neat and pretty and clean and, and Joel said I want to use this building 20th Century Fox is going to pay for it we're going to tear them to shit and build them <laughs> right back exactly like you have them now and so what I'm saying is I was in my dressing room like resting and you'd hear these boom boom <laughs> boom da, 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 da. so I met uh, a lot of the people uh, one thing that was mem memorable was um, was uh Alexander Gudinov, because at that time he was married to Jacqueline Bissett, I think. Um, yeah, because they didn't live far from me. Anyway, so I saw him, you know, I knew he was a terrorist with the blonde hair, and I, I knew that, and I walked up to him one day and I said, you're Alex, right? He was in character, he went, Alexander. Because <laughs> a lot of actors when they're in character, you know, he's supposed to hate me. So, you know, that's that's what they do. I learned that in the business too. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I see actors and I'd be, hey. and if I was doing a scene where I wasn't supposed to be likable, they were mean to me. And I learned that about acting. They they were just in character. They're not supposed yeah. to like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't do that though. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, that's not my technique. <laughs> you mentioned uh, De Niro earlier, and when you kind of look through the trivia, he was one of the names that was 
mentioned and put forward to play uh, John McClain before Bruce Willis ends up with the role. And do you think this is one of them where everything just kind of happened for a reason, fell into place? Because as great of an actor as De Niro is, it's hard to imagine anyone else other than Bruce playing John McClain the way that he does. Yeah, I love Bobby. Um, you know, who doesn't? I mean, icon, legendary. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like this right here with us, it happens. That's what I believe. First of all, I believe in one day at a time. All we have is today. If I get wrapped up in tomorrow, I don't even know if I'm going to wake up. I mean, Trump might be doing some something and might want to <laughs> blow up the U.S. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like this all the time. You, you, you never, you never know with him, really. <laughs> you could be right. <laughs> so, so if I get wrapped up in tomorrow, it's not here yet. And if I'm like thinking about the past and what I didn't do and what I was supposed to do and what didn't happen. I'm wrapped up in guilt, shame, and fear. So mm -hmm. we have this, you guys are over there having a, a night and I'm having a great afternoon, yeah. Thanksgiving. <laughs> I keep it simple, keep it one day at a time. Does that help? Yeah. 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 When we so don't Keenan, have... yeah, what are you doing, don't... Keenan? <laughs> <laughs> Just listening, taking it all in. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know if we can go outside in the next day, so we do have so, to take it one day. Oh, that's day. right. <laughs> oh, we, shit. We literally cannot leave, so anything that comes oh our God, way, we take it. That's right, man. <laughs> yeah, you keeping us company. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not good. It, no. It's not good. Well, what's going on i mean with everything you know and i'm such a rebel you know with this uh epidemic thing and you know i'm being very very careful seriously because i'm like a rebel you know i live like at the beach on a cliff and so we don't have street lights up here <laughs> street street lights at night yeah. so i'm known dude i just jump in my car and just everywhere i go and people are like day you we're surprised that you haven't you're not in jail you're a cox and i got pulled over by the by the sheriffs up here you know and what I'm, my point is with this epidemic if anybody should have had it it should have been me because my ass goes <laughs> everywhere i was going everywhere i'd walk into the grocery store where i know everybody and and i didn't have my mask and the whole grocery store stopped and i went <laughs> Erica, you guys have any masks? And they run and they get me a mask out of the cash register thing or whatever. So um, it's, it's, it is unfortunate. You know, it's yeah. really unfortunate. Um, yeah. I just go into gratitude. Yeah. Complete yeah. gratitude. So. Um, we mentioned earlier that this is one of our favorite Christmas films. And obviously it's that way for a lot of people. When you were filming, was it ever mentioned about it being a Christmas film? Or is it one of those things that kind of picked up as it went on? Like, did you see it as a Christmas film while you were filming it? Uh, at the, you know, like the end, you know, I go, it's Christmas time. I got to be there for New Year's. It was supposed yeah. to be that yeah. Christmas time. You got yeah. Christmas and Hollis at the start. Yeah. I mean, we didn't go. I don't think it was ever like this is a Christmas movie and this is what it's, it, it was just, yeah. to me, it was just like, this guy wants to get back with his wife. That's all he wants. And to see his kids or whatever. And then he gets wrapped up in this shit with some terrorists <laughs> in a building, you know, and trying to get out of there. And it was, it was done so old school style because that was the authenticity of it. You know, he's crawling through jumping and his feet on broken glass and stuff like that. Yeah. They don't make movies like that anymore. <laughs> they attempt to, yeah. you know, they attempt to. I don't bash anybody if they're successful for what they do. However, that's just like what we see over here, OG, you know, original gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, you know, you don't do that with movies anymore, bro. You know, I think that's, that, that's what makes Die Hard so good, isn't it? That it's like the perfect mix of old school with the new school, with all other quips and the characters bouncing off each other. 
but it's got the mm-hmm. old school kind of action movie feel to it. I mean, that's why right. I love it so much. Yeah, you know, I reflect back, you know, moving forward with the commercial that was just released. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it took me a second because one of my friends said, yeah, you had that old ass limo. And I'm like, <laughs> he goes, you're still driving that old ass limo. And I'm like, because my friends, this is what we do. I have a very small circle. Yeah. We, um, we talk shit in each other's faces and we talk good behind your back. Yeah. Is what we do. Because I, I don't trust. <laughs> so anyway, you know, it was it was just like a trip. It is just like the whole thing, you know, was um was a trip. Yeah. yeah. Was that the first time you'd seen Bruce in a long time going doing that commercial? Yes. You know, I told you guys I'll be transparent with you because you're my yeah. boys, right? You're yeah. my boys now. 100%. I got you. I like you. I like you. I like you. I do. Um, no. <laughs> I start laughing and I can't stop. <laughs> so we're, we're on the set and they're doing the COVID testing all day long. You know, everybody got to be tested all day long. All day long, there were certain areas that you had to stand and all the stuff. So I didn't even see him. I was on the set and I was talking to makeup or wardrobe or something. I didn't even see him. And he he tapped. Bruce smiles. If you really get to know him, then he will laugh with you. Mm-hmm. And that's just how he is. It's not that he's mean. It's not that he's He's, that's just yeah. how he is. He's just yeah. like, he's chill, you know? And and another thing is with him, you need to watch what you say to him because that's just how he, that's just how it is. Yeah. That's how with anybody, you watch what you say. And so he tapped me, you guys, he goes, Argyle. And I turned around and I went, <laughs> and I had that mask on. I went, when the fuck have you been? I could have been <laughs> fucking dead by now. <laughs> Dude, he just he looked at me. He looked at me like this, and then he just he dropped down and he took his mask off. And he just... <laughs> <laughs> um, that was that was fun. You know that commercial. Yeah, um, I had no idea it was gonna do what it did. When I no, saw you I put haven't. on your Facebook um, the hashtag Die Hard is back, I thought you had had another film coming. Yeah. Um, so, um, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, my managers, you know, my PR team, they do that. They handle that stuff. Um, no, I just didn't, you know, I get stuff on, you know, social media, you yeah, know, yeah. Would, would you do our podcast? Would you do this? Yeah, would you yeah. do that? And, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, for, for a long time. And so, I sent it over to um, my management and that's them now. Uh, I sent it over to my, <laughs> no, I'm with my guys. I'm with my dudes. <laughs> Make my money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, the, the message came through and I sent it to um, my manager, Greg. I said, there's something else. Yeah. And, um, I mean, he, he got back to me and he goes, day. Yeah. And I said, yeah. He goes, this is no joke. I said, I didn't say what it was. I'm just, he goes, the way that they so eloquently presented themselves to you and the, the, the team that they have, they're very meticulous about how they sent this to you, this message to you. And they were like, we want you we will go and attempt to find someone that looks like him. However, we want you. I want to, okay, okay. And he goes, and he goes, I know who these people are, the ad agencies, it's big. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, hey, cool. You know, and, um, and so he sent them back and said, he's interested. And we, we left it and then they kind of, 
management and stuff, they do stuff that I don't see. Like with Lee Daniels, they, they cuss people out over, <laughs> hang up, <laughs> then they go to lunch the next day and kiss and stuff like that. <laughs> um, they like did their thing. And then I was like, like they came in, usually you wheel and deal in Hollywood. You know, we'll, we're gonna offer you this. And then, well, we won't take this, however, we'll take this. And can you give us this over here too? And then come back around. And then we both went, they, they you know, negotiate. Yeah. And you guys, they came at me and they went, boom. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my manager's like, Dave, this puts you in a really, really good position for your career. <laughs> I went, really? I said, okay. And they're going to pay you half up front. Happy days. I went, okay. Sure, let's go. <laughs> At the best time, dude. The best time. See, the thing I didn't explain to you guys is back then when you're young and you're thrown into that that limelight like that after Die Hard and then I did Head of the Class, I'm making 15 grand a week. I've got a house in Hollywood Hills. I've got a Range Rover. Madonna lives three blocks over. Rod Stewart's birthday party is, is tonight. Lawrence Fishburne's coming up. That's You get wrapped up into all of the glamour mm. and what guests am I on tonight you know what's going on um and you get into the club life you get into all that party stuff mm. and that's what we did that's what we did and so after Die Hard after head of the class I just really did some serious soul searching mm. you know I need to come to terms with my mother's death and you know the divorce and stuff like that and I really got in today and I really did a lot of praying and so what I'm saying to you is that when this came about I went into gratitude I didn't go into like a lot of Hollywood people are what can you get me what do you mean he's getting more than I am well how come well I want it you're not doing your job I was just like Dude, all I have is today, and I'm being appreciated for what I do. And I love you guys, by the way. I I apologize. The last time we were supposed to meet, I was sick. I really was. No, 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 no problem. And, and so now, dude, I'm like, and everything that's going on. The commercial came and it just went boom like that. I, we had no, I had no idea. They said we, they want you. And by the way, Bruce is on board, and he's definitely going to do it. I said. Because they they need they need you with him and I went okay okay sounds good sounds good and it was great crew you know I had a great time I had no idea they said it's gonna show at the Buccaneers and Packers game I'm not really yeah. into sports and I said Packers let me see that's something that was sex so I can remember that <laughs> Packers okay, Packers and Buccaneers. <laughs> so that's how I remembered it. And I was like, what's that all about? And they were my, my manager's team was like, you can't, you can't get any bigger. And then it was like that. They premiered it and then the World Series. And then so I'm just all this stuff. It's like happening again. You know, it's like happening again, all these opportunities and stuff. And um, it's not overwhelming because I started so young. However, it's amazing. You know, I'm just such in gratitude, you know, um, and the appreciation for life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just striving to be a humanitarian, bro. That's yeah. that's my deal. Yeah. That's it. When um, you, you see that and it's so big, did that you reflect on even more how big Die Hard is? Because obviously you've known that then, but I guess that must have really hit home that however many years on, people still want to see you in Die Hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an honor because over the years, I have a different perspective now. You know, I, um, I've grown, you know, I've grown. I was, 
you know, younger and, and I didn't gain the little bit of wisdom that I have now. I didn't have that. And I strive now to be humble. I don't tell people that I'm humble because if I tell people I'm humble, it's just like, like telling people I eat ice cream. <laughs> Yeah. You know, um, don't, to me, for me, you know, I'm like, I don't tell people I'm humble. Just do things yeah. that are moderation and seek to be humble. I didn't have that then. I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I was just young. And so to tap in on what you're saying, you know, it's just, it's a different perspective, a perception change and a different perspective of what's yeah. really going on. And what to be grateful for. Yeah. Yeah. You know, be grateful for the, the things that you do have, not that you don't have. And so, you know, it's it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. Just I love it. I love yeah. just being alive, man. Keenan, what are you doing, Keenan? <laughs> <laughs> just just gonna just gonna ask you the question. Um, like you say, yes. you you're changing perspective. Do you think it's made it made everything the second time, if not the second time around, but if you want to call it a diehard second time around, it made made things easier for you, like decision making. And I know you say you don't sort of look to the future and look to tomorrow, but as you're seeing things now, is there less panic and less 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 stars in your eyes? It's just take take every day and see what you can do with it and see see where it leads. Because it's interesting the changing. It's it is interesting the sort of, as you say as you get older. A little bit of wisdom, how how much your decision making changes, and how sort of how, how it can be so opposite um, in the same situation. Absolutely, Keenan. This see, there's my Keenan. <laughs> see, there's my Keenan. Uh, there's a brain somewhere under the air and <laughs> under the air and the big head. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's it's um, like I said. I'm in gratitude. I just walk around with an added attitude with a magnitude of gratitude, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I just appreciate everything in life now before, mm -hmm. like I said, you guys, when you get into Hollywood and you get to, to that stature and that level, you're just running around so much and you just, it's just, it's tiring. Your spirituality is, is not in check because you, you're so involved in the light and, you know, the people and, and there's no time to really watch your surroundings and, to, and, and see what's going on and, and to have the differentiation between the true and the false. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And, so, and, and now it's just like, I've learned through the years of what not to do in Hollywood. <laughs> and um, like now, dude, like I said, I was young, bro. Everybody party. Everybody yeah. party. I'm going to keep it real because I always keep it real now. Before you, dude, we, everybody snorted cocaine and, and you drank. Yeah. That's what you did in the 80s. Yeah. You know, you snorted cocaine and you drank. However, you didn't you kept that shit low, you know, and you didn't go around. And, and mm -hmm. so I, I started to see all of this going on and I was so young and I was just like, wow, this is Madonna's house, dude. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're not, you're not paying attention because you're not running your career. Your career is running you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now I've learned that I'm not running shit. God's yeah. running everything. I'm just a messenger. That's mm. it. That's it. Of, of that time when uh, you say you were doing the, the party and right after Die Hard, was there a moment where you kind of had a look around and realized just how big things had gotten? I mean, you just mentioned Madonna then. Was there, was there any other moments where you kind of, not maybe starstruck, but you realized just how big things had gotten for you? When you go somewhere and they're like a club or whatever, and it starts really happening a lot, and they see you walking down. I always had people, you know, friends. Mm -hmm. 
And when they start saying, how many are with you tonight? And stop everybody else and then go over and over again. It's, it's like, you know, like I said, I was so wrapped up into self. Mm -hmm. I was so into self, you know, what can you do for me? How am I going to look better than you? How am I going to act better than you? I don't like you because you didn't deserve that part. All that superficial stuff. And so, like I said, now I just appreciate, you know, I appreciate yeah. stuff. It's like if somebody gets something, whatever, I'm good for you. It was meant to happen, you guys. That's how I look at things, bro. That was, oh, I sometimes things will happen. I'll go, I'll look up, I'll go, I knew it. This yeah. is another one you want me to walk through, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> so um, I'm just appreciative. Yeah. You know, I'm just blessed and appreciative. I mean, for some guys to like ask me to speak with them about something that I'm doing in my life from on the other side of the fucking globe. <laughs> to me, dude, that's an honor, dude. There's people tomorrow. Oh, it's, our, it's, it's our honor. Not, it's our honor. <laughs> it's an honor, bro. The, there's people that are not going to wake up tomorrow, you guys. Yeah. They're not. No. They're not. There's people that have plans tomorrow. They're not going to wake up. Gonna make and so count. I look at, I embrace every day. I laugh, I have fun. And I mean, there's life, you know, shit's gonna happen. However, it's how do I respond or react to that situation? So that's the difference between now and then. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. yeah. And just finally, we wondered, we've been asking a lot. Obviously we spoke about this as a Christmas film. Is there a Christmas film that you go back to each year? Do you have a favorite? See, I like the scare. I like the scary stuff. I think there was some, a couple of them. Boris Karloff. You guys are too young, aren't you? Yeah. Boris no, Karloff. Frank, you Frank guys? Yes. Yeah. There was. There was. Oh, got oh, you. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys are maybe too young. Do you remember Mad Monster Party? You know, Mad no. Monster. Um, it's the monster man who did the mummy. Yeah. They have like the, the clay puppets that were supposed to be people. You, you know what I'm talking about? They're he old school, people. you guys. And I think it's one of those shows. If we see it, we'll know it. It's one of those. It's oh my God. Yeah, look up Mad Monster Mash, you guys, on YouTube. Yeah. And it, like Phyllis Diller, they had like the comedians and they were made of clay. And they were characters and they were puppets and they would talk and they would go, and it's the mummy, it's the monster mash. I like fun <laughs> stuff. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer was all right, you know, it was kind of. Um, you, you know, I like just just fun stuff. I like um, nostalgic stuff. Yeah, yeah, Dude, absolutely. You mentioned Frank Sinatra, and, and I like nostalgic stuff and music, you know. Um, yeah. I was listening yeah. to It's a Wonderful World today. You know, I just like, like I said, my mom, I lost my mom on Christmas Day when I was 10. Oh, now I'm nice. just, I don't, I didn't understand it when I was younger. People would say, your mom wouldn't want you to be sad. And I didn't understand that. And because you're human, you're going to feel what you feel. Now, today, I'm like, my mom want me to be sad? Fuck no. Mm -hmm. So I have fun, you know, and I laugh and I, I talk to people when they have a loss. You know, to me, I'm like, that's what, that was her time to go. Mm -hmm. that, that's when she was supposed to go, you know? So yeah. God has, life is a journey, not a de destination, you know? And, it's, and I just appreciate one day at a time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, thank you so much for giving us so much of your time today we, we really appreciate it yeah and, uh, i hope you have a good rest of your day and, and a great christmas 
Thank you, man. Thank you guys so much. No cheating. That's my cheating. Thanks very much for your time. Dev. Much yeah. appreciated, mate. I love you guys. Nice, Luke, Jack, 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 Catch you later. Take care, Luke, mate. Yeah. Luke, Jack, Keenan. You guys. Thank you. It was an honor. No and you guys have a a wonderful yippee ki yay fucking Christmas. <laughs> we'll make sure we Thank will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys, Take man. care. Thanks, you got it, man. Peace out.